It is time, my lord, to engrave your legend into the world. But do not be hasty to thrive in this vast and volatile domain. You will first need to study the lay of the land. In the far southern wastes, he who hunts unseen is in his element. Oxyotl, bane of the dark gods, wages a war of revenge against the fell powers and any who would stand with them. Along these ragged shores, an endless demon horde spills into the world, tainting the very land on which they step. In the jungles of the gods, Teclis has sensed a need of his presence. Be it the Skaven scurrying through these trees, or an imbalance yet to be discovered, Teclis will oppose the ruinous powers in all their forms. Kalida, High Queen of the Court of Libarus Tomb Kings, has reclaimed her ancient homeland. But her reign is fraught with challenge. The Silver Host Vampire Counts also lay claim to these lands, and from their cold hands, Kalida must pry the crater of the Walking Dead. To the lush east, Krugarth Plague Father scours the Dragon Isles for new ingredients to fortify his plagues. Amongst the tropical palms and sandy shores, he discovers an enemy. Tepox Spawn are a tenacious breed of lizard men, mysterious and otherworldly, with little love for the agents of chaos. In life, Helmand Gorst's taste for adventure took him far from the Empire's borders. Perhaps it is the ghost of his past explorer that has seen him to the haunted forest, where he is set upon by all manner of creatures and all manner of new corpses to repurpose. A resource he'll find in abundance within Grand Cathay. If my sister is found delinquent in her duty, then we defend the Bastion. The Dragon Emperor's territories are vast, varied, and fractured. Amongst the stoic Cathayans, whose architectural prowess is beyond compare, skulk creatures of foul intent. The vampiric curse siphons life from the land, which is trampled beneath the heavy boot of orc warbands, and, burrowing deep into the heart of this once great nation, a subtle infection of Skaven. Enemies within and beyond, the great bastion's continued survival is a constant uncertainty. One Miao Ying must contend with if she means to bring harmony to her homeland. In the barren north, hope, mercy and virtue are not common commodities. These jagged rocks, sickly forests, and broken mountains mirror the soul of a world overrun by corruption. The perfect stage for the likes of Grimgor Ironhide and his ilk to test their mettle against ravenous ogres. In the path to the east, the Green Slaughterer will find game worthy of his considerable prowess. In these twisted chaos wastes, ambitious and cruel men devote themselves to the Dark Gods in exchange for a morsel of strength. Seldom few manage to wrestle more than scraps from the Gods' table, but Archeon, the Ever-Chosen, is not one of them. He will use his demonic gifts to see the mortal world bleed. 
But the mortal world is not so easy to tame. When men like Boris Ursus grow tired of being a shield, and instead become the spear. Kislevite spears are a tool the Demon Prince knows intimately. In his past life, he wielded one in the name of honor. Now, he wears a different name and cares only for forging himself into a weapon of unfathomable destruction. Sometimes, carried on the whisper of an ice-laced breeze, he hears the name Daniel. A harsh and frozen world breeds violent and savage survivors. Slave traders, brutes, and self-made kings war over slivers of habitable soil in the Norskan mountains. But beyond lies the bulwark of Kislev. A tempting prize for the agents of chaos, and the most direct route into the wider territories of man. Here, Opposing ideologies will need to either unite or overcome one another to face a greater evil. The great orthodoxy protects you. I protect you. Take not one step backward. Kislev's shield is cracked, and through the rupture, all manner of horrors invade. A fact felt keenly on the isolated shores of Albion, which will soon serve as Bellacor's throne. I sit upon the precipice of God. There is no respite from corruption even in the waters, where dark terrors and vampiric pirates command legions of undead vassals. In the kingdoms of Nagaroth, the Witch King builds a twisted army of hatred. There is no price Malekith would not pay to claim the Isles of Ulthuan and subjugate those who denied him his birthright. Subjugation is no option for the Sisters of Twilight, who fight bitterly in defense of their home. But the decadence of the Dark Elves has summoned Slanishi invaders, and it is Lord Mazdamundi, the Slan Mage Priest, who must hold fast at the borders of Lustria. Fueled by a millennia-long vendetta, Nakari arrives on Kris with a goal that would see the High Elves of Othman either slaughtered or dominated. The descendants of Arnerian, beware. Slanishi Roth has returned. Lustria, a continent rich with all manner of life. Here, civilizations as old as the world offer insight into a past rife with hardship where brave lizardmen warriors laid down their lives in accordance to the great plan. A war still waging to this day. Kairos Fate Weaver comes to Dawn's Landing and the bottom of the world to liberate it of its high elf occupants. The changer of ways will have reasons for this journey, but to know them will be to court insanity.
Manfred von Karstein's lust for power has led him deep into the shifting sands, where he contends with the likes of an undead contemporary, Citra the Imperishable. Each with imperial dreams, each with ambitions too broad to coexist. The hard rock and barren landscape of this pitiful mortal realm is a poor substitute for the glory of Korn's eternal battlefield. And although Scarbrand the Exiled is as far from his lord's skull throne as he could possibly be, he finds some solace in the blood of an unending parade of orcs. Along the world's edge mountains, a cacophony of cultures thrash and vie for the right to exist. But it is the Dawi with the most at stake, and so Thor Grim Grudgebearer remains close to the ancient seat of his power. A wise king indeed. Fellow Dawi, I see all scope. They foul our mountains with their vile tanks. Amongst the western border princes, the Gore Harvester has carved himself out a fine fishing hole. Scrag the Slaughterer is a far cry from his fellow ogres, but he'll eat his way to the Great Moor eventually, one Empire footman at a time. And here, cradled within protective mountain ranges, lie the lands of man. Besieged by roaming beastmen. Ravaged by orc tribes. Threatened by haughty wood elves. And plagued by infighting that would tear them asunder. They must unite beneath a single banner, or risk extinction. The world is indeed vast, the players constantly shifting, and there are further dangers here than meet the eye. It will take more than military might to conquer the unending threats, more than spirit and diplomacy to survive. It will take the forging of an immortal empire.